Gaming memories are amazing. We all have them and each of us have different experiences that define our tastes in the games we play. To give you an example, I first played the PlayStation 1 back in 1997. I was 4 years old and to experience gaming on a television and seeing the images change as I interacted with a controller blew my perception of reality. I'm sure this picture of my face proves my point. In December 1998 I got my very own PlayStation and with it a few games. Call Borders 2, Demo 1 version 5, Gran Turismo and V Rally. Today. It's time to revisit the game that got me on this long crazy gaming journey in the first place. Going back to your first ever game is bittersweet. You remember all the good times it provided to you especially when you were young. However, that does not guarantee that the game is good. 20 plus years is a long time to experience other newer games that push the boundaries, even on the same system, and you yourself will be changing throughout that time. V Rally for me was indeed the first game that I ever played, and I wondered, is it still worth playing after all these years? Does it hold up, or was I blindsided by youth and inexperience? I guess we need to find out. So, what is V Rally? I'll tell you. It's an arcade rally racing game, and this was at a time where racing games like it only started to get rather good. The first thing that comes to my mind is Sega Rally Championship. I never played that at the time, but I love the game, and it's hard not to compare it to this. First off, you have three modes, Arcade, Championship, and Time Trial. Time Trial lets you try to get the best time on each unlocked course, but otherwise it's better left as a kind of practice mode. The main courses are the former two modes. Arcade has three difficulty modes with more tracks to race on as time goes on. You have to race other cars and hope to win the stages while battling a time limit, so being slow is simply not allowed. You can choose whichever car you like, and at the end, you'll unlock the other tracks and difficulty modes. Championship is the same, only you race three tracks per continent. Some tracks are point to point, like in a real rally race, albeit with everyone still on the field. And get this, there's no time limit. Nice. I must also mention you can tune your car before each race, although the only thing I ever change is the gearbox. Maximum speed every day, obviously. The rest don't seem to do much to the car's handling or performance. The cars here range from kit cars with front wheel drive to full blooded WRC cars. There's a decent amount to choose from, but they all perform the same respective to their class. The Mitsubishi WRC felt no different to the Subaru WRC, but at least the cars look good for their time. Let's go on to the track now. This is where racing games are won or lost. At first glance, this game has everything you'd ever want. The level design and track quality is pretty good. There's plenty going on in the background of each track and the detail of both the assets and foliage is mighty impressive. A nice feeling of scale and depth washes over you as you drive. There's a good mix of narrow roads, hazards like jumps and other miscellaneous occurrences that make you think twice as you drive at top speed. The graphics in general are just great for the time. The team here definitely used the PlayStation to its best, and nothing feels undercooked or underdeveloped. The detail, lighting and colours really shine through. The tracks however are definitely the stars of the game. It's great to see this level of complexity with all the tracks, and all of them feel different too, 
job well done indeed. Oh, and there's 16 by 9 support, which stretches the screen, albeit in a letterboxed format. Still impressive to see it though for a PlayStation 1 game from 1997. The sound is decent too. Okay, the vehicle sounds are a bit blare and stock, but the other sound effects do a great job making you feel the rush of driving fast over various terrain. It's pretty detailed. I mean, you have wind rushes, plant brushing sounds, skidding, and water splashes. It feels and sounds believable. The team really did their homework making the game. Medium right. Hard left. The soundtrack is a big part of arcade racing games and for me, it is instantly nostalgic. I love the soundtrack, not because of its personal attachment to me, I feel it perfectly amps up the action as you play. The rock soundtrack is a little stockish sounding but there's an injection of personality, someone was definitely passionate with the music and the guitar work is pretty impressive. African Vibes, which is the second song, is my favourite from V Rally. I instantly feel like I'm back in 1997 again, and damn it, it puts a huge smile on my face. The soundtrack isn't the greatest, but for me, it's everything and then some. I guess the game being made in Europe helped out in this area. Medium right. Easy right. Easy right. So far, V-Rally has been very positive and everything is pointing to a great gaming experience. Well, unfortunately, there's a price to pay for the niceties. Catastrophic handling. Here's the thing, you can make the best looking and sounding game in the world, but it means shit if the gameplay is terrible. Sadly, V-Rally is in that category. The handling is hard to describe, but it feels both floaty and imprecise. I can never work out where the wheels are half the time, and the car loves to feel stiff when you turn. If you try to be vigorous, you lose control, or you end up in a massive tank slapper, which takes ages to get out of. The brakes don't feel reassuring either. I found myself braking long before corners came up, and driving high speeds down narrow rocky roads was terrifying. Why is that? Well, the game has another big problem, the physics. I don't know who thought it was a good idea to do this, but they're terrible, just terrible. If you hit anything, the cars just freak out and you end up spinning, flipping out, costing you precious seconds. A minor clip or bump can cost you the race. Getting bumped by the awful artificial intelligence can throw you off course like you were hit at top speed. It's ridiculous. In later stages, the narrow track design really hits home. You see these rocks that stick out? The amount of times I've hit them and lost the race is unbelievable. Even a minor clip is enough to make me restart a race. Combine this with the awful handling that inspires no confidence in the car and you often have to go slowly just to make it around the corner. Of course, the time limit forces you to drive quickly so you are at the mercy of a dice roll. That's not cool. Oh, and God forbid you go too fast for a big jump. Otherwise... Right. This game is a complete disappointment. It had the right ingredients and it looked like a complete game. But the bad handling and awful physics ruin everything. I'm not saying you can't have fun with V-Rally. You'll just get the feeling that this could have been special and it just isn't. Very disappointing indeed. Overall, this game is a big disappointment. As a child, I didn't know any better. Even the worst games ever would have won me over. But now being older and experiencing other games has shown me how flawed V-Rally is. It's sad because on one hand I don't regret playing and experiencing this game, but on the other it's just not as good as I thought it would be. 
I'll always be nostalgic for it, and for me, it's an important step of my gaming life, but I don't think I'll be revisiting it much after this. At least you folks know about it now. Do you guys remember the first game you ever played? Let me know in the comments and I hope to see you all again next time.